Understanding computing power and computing services is a critical part of using AWS and being able to use the compute services, which are super cool that AWS has. So let's understand exactly what is computing power. Computing power can be thought of like the power or engine in a car. The more powerful your engine, the faster your car is going to go, the better it's going to handle corners, like all of these cool things that happen with powerful cars. <laughs> then we have AWS and compute power. The more compute power that a computer has, the faster it's going to be able to run, the more it's going to be able to handle, the more it's going to be able to do. We're talking specifically about speed, how fast it can complete tasks and do calculations, complexity, how much complexity it can handle, multitasking, multiple things running at once. This is how it does computer games, streaming live, where you've got a chatbot going, while you've got Spotify playing, while you've got all these different things that are happening. Data processing, so being able to go through huge amounts of data, get analysis from it, even just process it and run with it. And then artificial intelligence, which kind of combines everything else that we've just talked about. There's a lot of advantages to getting your computing power from AWS. The first of which is that you don't require any new physical servers. Traditionally, you would have had to get a lot of servers yourself to actually be able to increase the computing power of your application or your project or whatever it is that you're building. But now you don't need to spend that money. You don't need to do that research. You don't need to hire the people to maintain those servers. You don't need to pay for rent or for maintenance of a place to store those servers. You don't need to continue to customize them as your application and business grows. All of that can just be handed off to AWS. The second awesome advantage is virtualization. Virtualization is basically where you've got your one computer, which you can think of as like a master computer. And then you've got all these other smaller, powerful computers that can go out like your little minions. And they're going to go out and do awesome things and run everything that you need to run. But they're all controlled by this one master computer. It's like you've got 10 different computers that are all just in one. That's what virtualization is. Then we have variety. Sometimes the one service that you might start with, like EC2 instances, which are virtual machines, might not actually be the way to go. It might be that there's other tools that we're going to talk about later with AWS that might be a better fit. It doesn't matter, really. You can upgrade them and change them pretty easily. But at least you have the option and the variety to do so quickly and very easily compared to if you were trying to build it all from scratch yourself. And of course, there's scalability as well, just the ability to scale up or scale down how much compute power you need based on demand. If you're not getting a lot of demand, you don't need a lot. You can keep that small and save your money instead of just paying a flat rate for a hopefully the right amount. But then on the flip side, if you suddenly get a huge peak of traffic, then it's not going to shut everything down and break it. It's just going to scale automatically to whatever you need. Now, there's three different types of compute services available. We have virtual machines, container services, and serverless options. We're going to start with virtual machines. Virtual machines are probably some of the most iconic AWS services. They're really popular and what AWS became famous for. The most famous one is Amazon EC2, which we've got a whole bunch of videos on. And they offer recent compute capacity. So all of the computing power that we've been talking about, a virtual machine is basically like one of those mini minions that can go out and have an extra boost of power for you. So you get all of the extra power and Amazon handles all of the hardware and the operating systems for you. Then we have container services. Container services are slightly different because they allow you to basically wrap up all of the different things that you need and then deploy them in different environments. But because you put them in a container, they're all going to kind of the same. It's a little bit of a confusing topic, so don't worry if you don't get it straight away. But it basically means that you can run your apps, whatever they are, in different places, but consistently so that they perform the same wherever they are. We've got some more videos on that later on. And then we have serverless computing. For serverless computing in AWS, we're using tools like AWS Lambda and AWS Fargate. And in this one, you only pay for the actual compute time used and all of the infrastructure management is taken off your hands. So there you go, a bit of an overview into the computing services in AWS and what computing services are in the first place, why we should care about them. See you in the next video and happy learning.